when pastor told me that I was going to take the service here, I spoke to God about it and the Lord gave me this word for this parish. And it's taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts of the Apostles 4 verse 13. Please put it up for us. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned. So you can underline that in your Bible. That they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. That all of this can only be done by one thing and one thing only. That these people had been with Jesus. Because the Bible says they took knowledge of them. That this transformation in the life of those people can only be as a result of their being with Jesus. So immediately something comes to your mind. Who is Jesus? How come these people knew? You see, the world knew Jesus before even the disciples. And they knew what he stood for. They knew his ministry. They knew his life. They knew the kind of thing that he did. And they had seen the transformative life that Jesus has subjected a lot of people to. And the Bible says they took knowledge of them. That this is not ordinary. <laughs> that these people have been with Jesus. So this message is in three parts. One, who is Jesus? Two, how can you be with him? How can I be with him? What are the benefits of being with him? So the first part is who is Jesus? The Bible describes him in Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 6 to 7. Prophetically, Isaiah who was born before the time Jesus arrived in the world, prophetically said that Jesus will be born and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And he went further to say that the government of this world will be upon his shoulders. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So Isaiah talked about Jesus Christ and described him in many words. Prince of peace. And that you also see in his lifestyle. Jesus was a man of peace. Counselor, he was one who could counsel. Things manifested in his life and the spirit of God confirmed everything in his life. And you also notice this in the book of Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 35 and Matthew chapter 1, 21 to 23. When you get home, you can read that yourself. And please, after today, make it a habit of always studying your Bible. I, I, I like to challenge Christians. The Bible talks about the billions that they were more honorable than their brethren in that the things that they saw in the scriptures, what they had been taught, they went back to cross-check if those things are true. Permit me to just digress a bit before I go into the next one. There's a church in, in Apapa. Many years ago when I was working in Apapa, the pastor of the church on Marine Road told his members to bring their, their, their hair to church. Pri, pri, hair in their private parts, so to speak. And Peter and all of that. And they went to give their hair to him. Question is, is it in the scripture? Is it in the Bible? There's a pastor who will ask women to bring their underwear, undergarments to church that he's going to pray. To what end? Is it in the Bible? And if you cannot associate anything with the Lord Jesus Christ in the scripture, please don't go near it. If I come to you today and I say the Lord, there's a pastor in America, a very popular pastor, a Nigerian pastor, who said to his people that the Lord told him to come to America. All right? And that he needs green card. And the members of the church will contribute $800,000 for him to get green card. God never works like that. God never, I, I don't know about other pastors. At least I can say this about my own self. When I, I was working somewhere, when I had to leave, and I had nothing. And I was a friend of mine, I wanted to buy a property in Dolphin. And I just sat down with him. And in my heart, I was saying, Lord, I wish I was the one buying this property. In Dolphin, in my heart. I didn't say it to him. I didn't say it to anybody. My wife also was not even aware because it was a visit. I just said in my heart, I wish I was the one buying it. And I had nothing. And then suddenly the man looked at me. I was wondering what is going on here. He looked at me intensely. The next thing he said was, Quickers, you don't know, you believe what I've just heard now. He said, the Lord told me that the house I'm negotiating to buy is not for me, but for you, his son. <laughs> Brethren, so you, you can understand why I preach the gospel with so much passion. I have seen God. I have seen God move. 
He was so convinced. He said, I, even if you don't have the money, I'm prepared to give you a loan. I said, if you give me a loan, that's not God. I said, if it is God, he'll provide it. What I say to you, if you have the access to the MD of the company, the company is called Safe Trust, a, a mortgage company. The man told me, he said, since he has been doing property transactions, he has never seen anything like this. Uh, you can't see it because it's God. Did they have one error? Take. Did they have to? I didn't pay him the money in full. The man got to a point where he got tired. What kind of transaction is this? He has never done. Ah, what kind of transaction? It can only be God transaction. It can only be God transaction. How else can I have this testimony if it's not God? So brethren, do not have faith in church. Don't have faith in pastors. Have faith in God. My younger sister today in the UK is no longer going to church because her pastor was a pedophile. It has affected her faith. And I said to her, it's because you had faith in him. Why would you have faith in the pastor? Look unto the Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy? Did he say, look unto me, Paul? Did he say, look unto me, Peter? Look unto Jesus Christ. Pastors are human beings. They can disobey, they can sin. How many things have we heard? How many things is going on? So why should we have faith in pastors? So when Jesus Christ called these ones to be with him, he was to groom them. His name, Jesus was given to him by God himself. God christened him. God gave him that name. Luke chapter 1 verse 31, Matthew 1 21, Philippians 2 verse 9. When you get home, you can read that yourself. Jesus came into life knowing that he had the ministry, knowing that he had the purpose. In John 10 verse 10 and 11, Jesus made the world to understand what his ministry is. He says, the thief come not but to kill, to steal and to destroy. I have come for you to have life and to have it more abundantly. He came as a good shepherd who came to lay down his life for you and I. In 1 John 3 verse 8, he said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Nigeria is a classic case where the work of the devil has to be destroyed. And that's where the church comes in. And the church is disappointing Jesus Christ. I will also digress a bit. Please just bear with me. Because there's a lot that the Lord has laid upon my heart to share with us. My wife said to me, if all the members of the redeemed Christian church of God in government parastatals, in ministry, reflect Christianity, in the true sense of Christianity, we will not have all the crises that we're having today. All right? Somebody once said this, if Nigerian breweries is posting so much in terms of profit, and you look at the Christian population, all the Christian leaders today, the top Christian leaders in the world, where are they found? Where are they found? Nigeria, some of you are free to say it. Say it, they are found in Nigeria. You have Shiloh Hour. Where is Shiloh Hour? In Ogun State. You have Holy Ghost Service. You have Holy Ghost Congress. Where is it found? You have power must change hands. Where? The top pastors in Africa are here. You have Redeem. You have Deeper Life. You have Assemblies of God's Church. You have winners. On a Sunday morning, go around our neighborhoods. We are so mean to ourselves. What is the true, what's the true sense of Christianity? I have seen pastors fight in camp after church service. One took off his jacket. Oh, mommy. <laughs> my boy, Pastor. My wife was there. At the car park. He took off his Ah, oh, mommy. My boy, my <laughs> When you have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will not be the same. I remember one particular day. We had just finished the vigil. And I was down by the Thomas. And one, you know, God has a way of also testing your patience. He brought an Okada man, anointed from hell, to cause me harm, to cause me hurt, to vex my spirit, to get me angry, to get me agitated. 
Ah, I won't kid you. I was neck deep in martial arts at that time. So I jumped out of the car. I grabbed him by the neck. I clenched my fist. I was going to give him a punch. And then inside of me, I just had pastor. <laughs> you see, God has a fantastic sense of humor. Ah, you're working for me. What image are you projecting? So I grabbed him and I said, mm, mm. I jumped into the car. And I, I know the man would have been surprised. I entered the car. I said, Lord, please, I'm sorry. You know, the Bible says, be angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down your anger. I betrayed emotion. Lord, please forgive me. I entered the car. And I, now, sometimes I say to my wife, what I can come back, and she be be saying, why? I said, people cheat me. People insult me. People deride me. And I don't know what it means to fight back. And to tell you the truth, I also do not even understand why that is so. In, the, in my younger days, ah, you don't try it with me. Somebody who did martial art to black belt level, I am not ordinary human being. Ah, but I learned how to fight. I learned how to defend myself. But with Christ, I can't defend myself any longer. What is the essence of having Christ if I can defend myself? So brethren, you must learn to understand that the ministry of Jesus Christ is to destroy the works of the devil. And that is the place he has also put you. As a person, Jesus was someone of great learning. And as a Christian, you must also be of great learning. Luke chapter 2, 46 to 48, when you get to it, you can read that yourself. The process of learning learns means that you must hear and also ask questions. A young man said to his pastor, Pastor, what is the essence of church? The pastor was taken aback. He said, why do I have to come to church? My son said to me, leave me, let me discover God for myself. Don't force me. You know this God? Let me also discover it for myself. I don't want to have your testimony. Let me have my own testimony. So what, what are we doing in church? If you don't ask questions, why do I need to pay tithe? Why do I need to give offering? Why do I need to pray? Why do I need to hear the word? What is the essence of having a pastor over you? The Bible says, as we fellowship with him and one another, the blood of Jesus Christ son cleanses us from all sins. So when you come to church, as you fellowship with him and with the brethren, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you for the sin that you came into church with. But I'm not saying you must sin all the time. Apostle Paul said, must I continue to sin for grace to abound? He said, God forbid. If you yield yourself to sin, you become a slave to sin. Sin now becomes your master. And that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God. Luke 4, 42 to 44. You can, you can read that yourself. Jesus was a man of prayer. Are you a child of prayer? Do you pray? Luke 5, 16. Luke 6, 12. The Bible says he will wake up when others are asleep and then go to the mountain top to pray and that you pray all night. I am not saying you should also pray all night because we live in a, a system that is busy. And I say to people, if I decide to go full time now as a pastor, it be up by me. Who will feed me? Who will take care of my family? If God has not called me to be full time and I now decide to, so this is, I see somebody walk up to me and say, God has called me to ministry. Ah, you have no idea. Your pastor that is seated here, and I'll say this here. When it comes to giving, we, pastors, must give first. If we say we want to do a project, we must give first. So if I don't have to give, I was just telling him, somebody said to me, carry your own load. But that's the truth. Many people don't see that. So as a pastor, I must be seen, whatever I say to you to do, I must do first. Pastor Debra told us that a while back. If I say to you fast for one week, I must do my own fast first before I tell you to fast. What's the point? I tell you to fast and then I enter the corner of my room. Just so Gary. So I'm drinking water. I remember when we were being ordained, one particular pastor was, was asked to step aside. When we were being made full pastors, what was the issue? They said ah, it was difficulting. How can you difficulty? Because you're meant to be fast. We're doing, I think it was seven days dry. No food, no water. And he was using the toilet. So they decided to investigate, say something is wrong here. 
and they realize that the security man will sneak in Gary to him every night when we're sleeping ah to be ordained as a pastor in redeem is a humbling experience your pastor will say that to you we're made to sleep on the floor we're made to sleep on the mat we're made to shave without mirror we're taught so many things we learn humility by what we saw. no ac no fan we were having a bath is here he can confirm it to you we're having a bath in the open we must have a bath before that wake up we're having lectures back to back praise the lord I, I, i'm not saying that it is something that is palatable but hey the experience is good i have learned how to about yesterday we came in we had to stay in one hotel things were not working the way they ought to work i said to my wife don't worry it's not luxury it's just one night let's suffer for now for the sake of the kingdom it's okay let us suffer for now it doesn't really matter i have learned it i can sleep without fan i can sleep without ac paul said i have learned to abound and to abase i can do all things through christ who strengthens me many of us one period of denial of certain basic things hey if husband you wife will face husband i didn't marry you to suffer a wife once told her husband i'm not the one called into ministry you're the one called into ministry your family is taking soon he wake her up Ogunya, we need to fast we need to pray ay ay heaven must hear us say ah joe my coat here by me he was a long way god didn't call me praise the lord but that is that will not be your portion in the name of jesus christ jesus taught his disciples he taught them luke 2 37 to 38 luke 20 37 to 38 he performed several miracles restoring sight to the blind making the cripple whole he did also so the world knew all of this about jesus christ they also knew him as a man of peace Isaiah 53 verse 7 he didn't justify he didn't when people accused him wrongly he didn't speak back he just kept quiet because he knew that the world would learn about him Jesus empowered his disciples to manifest his anointing he has empowered you Mark 16 16 to 18 now question is how can I be with Jesus Christ Mark 3 13 to 19 mark 3 13 to 19 the bible says he went I, I want him to put this up so that i can be fast also on this one mark 3 13 to 19 now let me use this to illustrate he went up the mountain let me step down can i can i come down sir now he's at the base so i take this as a mountain so he got up the mountain do you know what it means to go up the mountain he must have exerted energy it must have drained him he must have taken a lot from him so he went up the mountain and stood at the mountain top look at take verse 14. no this is this one he called it unto him go back again please he called it unto him whom he would say you come you come you come and he called many to come to him from the mountain top look at what it was and he ordained to her that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach there's a period of incubation there's a period of growth there's a period of development there's a period of denial of self there's a period of self-sacrifice there's a period where you need to get rid of your flesh and your excesses and this can only happen in his presence he must break you before he will mold you before he can send you out so they came to him they went through what he went through all they were doing is they were looking up to him ah oh dear wow i'm tired i'm tired lord but they kept encouraging themselves and when they got there they sat down with him he taught them he groomed them he trained them that's why when the world saw peter and john ignorant and unlearned men ah, somebody must have taught this ones somebody must have groomed this one who else will have done this they traced it back to the lord jesus christ and this they found in mark 3 from verse 13 to 19 he called them don't go out to preach if you have not placed stays in the place of incubation some pastors have had their destiny scuttled those who embarked on deliverance 
Today, where are they? You don't know the Lord that you want to use. You don't know the Lord that you, whose name you want to call upon. Somebody did like this to you, and you also do it like this to the person. <laughs> when you have not fortified yourself in the place of prayer. Some of you don't even take time to study the word. If I come here and I say some things, I will expect some people to challenge. I say, no, 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 no. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the some, I say to them in church, challenge me. If I say anything that is not in the scripture, challenge me. If you see me outside with someone else that is not my wife, challenge me. But we'll just be quiet. Do you know that as pastor, we'll render, we'll give account of your souls? The way we live our lives? <laughs> Praise the Lord. In Romans 8, verse 14, and Galatians 5, verse 18, we're encouraged to know the Holy Spirit and to walk with Him. And that's what Apostle Paul was talking about. You must also be taught the word of God when you are in God's presence by pastors. Jeremiah 3, 15, Ephesians 4, 11, and then Jeremiah 23, verse 4, Ezekiel 34, verse 23. To be with Jesus is to abide in his word. Spend quality time studying the Bible. John 15, verse 7. Spend quality time in God's presence. First Peter 2, verse 2. It says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Praise the Lord. To be with Jesus, you need to forget your past. To be with Jesus, you must go to him voluntarily and willingly surrender your life to him. Revelation 3.20, John 1 verse 12. To be with Jesus is to do his will. Mark 16, 16 to 18. And his will is for you to preach, to lay hands on the sick, to talk to people about him. In John 4.29, 39 to 41. We see the woman by the well of water. All her testimony. She didn't know the Bible. All she said to the people around her was, Come and see a man who told me everything. Sometimes some of us will say, I didn't go to Bible college, so I'm not able to say. God does not need your education. And that's why he said, Peter and John were ignorant and unlearned men, and he used them. I said in the morning, Pastor Badari, he didn't go to school. Not cited. But he sees the Bible. I said to us, the founder of the mission, Pastor Akindaomi, Pa Akindaomi, didn't go to school. But he heard from God. And God told him, Pastor Deboe will come in. And Pastor Deboe will take the gospel to all the nooks and crannies of the world. The name redeemed Christian Church of God. Some of us will have had it. It was given to him by God. It was not lettered. It caused someone to write what he saw. And the person wrote it out. The redeemed Christian Church of God. All of that today is history. So don't, don't, don't defeat yourself. Don't write yourself away because you're not educated. Who cares? What is education? Can you speak your native language? Can you write your native language? Look at where China is today. Look at where China is today. It is not a godly society. But look at where they are today. We are here spending days and hours to pray. Praise the Lord. You need to be in the place of incubation. Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Galatians 1. 11 to 22. Luke chapter 1 verse 80. Galatians 1. 11 to 22. Please I want you to highlight Luke chapter 1 verse 80 for me. So that we can use that to also talk about the point where you also need to grow. Look at what the Bible says. And the child grew and worked strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Can you see this? This is the pit experience I talked about in the morning. There's a place of insignificance where God will be building you. Somebody once told me about Pastor Chris Oyakilome, who attended the same school with him, that the man would be in the bush praying when they were in the university, shouting. He said sometimes they're in their room, sleeping, and they will hear a voice like an animal in the bush, praying in tongues. So somebody who had been at the back side, somebody who had been in the desert, groomed by God. Pastor Dewe once lived in Mushi, we all know that. All right? There was a time he was not known. What was he doing? He was taking root downwards to bear fruit upwards. 
as a child of God, you also need to take roots downwards. Spend time studying the Bible. Not with the purpose of showing that you know the scripture. But discover God for yourself. As it is written in the word. So what are your benefits as a Christian? One of the benefits that you must have as a Christian is that the Lord God Almighty will empower you for greatness. Two, the devil and demons in hell will also take knowledge of you. That you are with him. In Acts of the Apostles 19, 13 to 19, the seven sons of Sceva tried to showcase the Lord Jesus Christ in proclaiming his word. And the demons spoke out and said, ha ha, don't go there. Paul we know. <laughs> Jesus we know. Who are you? I remember some years ago, somebody was trying to cast out demons. And well there, young Christians, just standing. The man was shouting, come on! come out come out and one brother just joined and he said come out and the demon spoke <laughs> from you <laughs> do you want me to tell them what you did yesterday the brother didn't say a word and he walked away you cannot be living in sin you cannot be living in fornication you cannot be living in adultery you cannot be living a life of falsehood and expect the power of god to also manifest in your life it's not possible so when the demon spoke the brother didn't say a word, he just walked away. Because the demon knew. Are you aware that there are monitoring spirits from the pit of hell monitoring our activities? Everything we do, everything we say. And, and that is the spirit of the accuser of the brethren before God. That's why you must be very careful. Men might not see what you do behind the curtain, but God sees every lie you tell every life of falsehood the things you have done god is keeping records as he's keeping records the demons are also keeping records a time will come when they will approach god you can no longer protect him he that breaks the head the serpent will bite he has broken the head we need to move him and god will say okay move him but don't destroy his soul uh, deal with him now sometimes when things come my way instead of also identify that it's god that is dealing with us we think he's our neighbor and then you go and meet pastor pastor please pray for me i don't understand you don't understand what somebody came to me once and he said pastor please agree with me i want to apply for visa and i must be given this visa so i shut my eyes to pray for him and god said ask him the documents he has brought are they genuine documents so i opened my eye i said the lord said as you ask you he said hey pastor just pray just pray. i said i'm sorry i'm not going to pray i said because if my master is saying to me i should ask you the foundation for this prayer point is false. So why should I agree with you? So if it does not happen, you think God didn't answer your prayer. So God is telling you beforehand, don't come to me to approve of your lies. Pastor Kule Ajayi, true story. Pastor Debo is mystery. Traveled out of this country without a passport. Are you aware? How many of us have had the testimony? Without a passport. It can only be God. He traveled out of this country without a passport. God can do the impossible. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He says, The heart of kings are in your hands. In his hands. He can turn it with us where you will. When you stand before men and you're a child of God, the grace of God upon your life will cause them to gravitate and levitate towards you. They will not know why they're doing what they're doing for you. He says strangers will submit themselves to you. He says the people you do not know, they will rise up to help you. Pastor Kalaja said he was at the American embassy and he queued up. And somebody just walked up to him. Sir, I perceive you a pastor. Please come. And took him out of the queue. Straight and gave him VIP treatment. What is working on him? Psalm 5 verse 12. He said, Thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou encompass him about as what? As with a shield. Don't look up to men. Look up to him. Don't trust any human being. Trust God. Praise the Lord. So your benefits will begin to manifest when you're drawn close to him. Your life will be transformed when you're with him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. You're delivered to set others free. Colossians 2 verse 14. And John 8 verse 36. Jesus himself has set you free from satanic influence and satanic control. You, you now become a beacon of hope.
to a dying world and a dying generation. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. He says, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. Everything about your life can no longer be subdued. God has endowed you with great wisdom and great intellect. This you'll find in 1 John 2, 20 and 27. And 1 John 4, verse 17. The Bible says, as Jesus is, so are we in this life. Brethren, sometimes I sit back and I say to myself, Lord, I wish I was a scientist. There was a day I sat down and I said, what can we do to ensure that there are no plane crashes? And the Lord gave me an idea about a capsule at the belly of the aircraft. Today, as I speak, it has been done. That at the point of impact, is just to press the button. So that all the passengers that are seated will be detached from the, from, from the plane and then there will be a parachute that will suspend the aircraft to coming down. Today, as I speak, they've done it in China. They've done it. The Americans are also working on it too. Somebody has done it. There was a day I was in traffic and I was thinking, that, Lord, I wish there's a way I can maneuver out of this place. And then suddenly I conceived an idea that if it's possible to build a car, just press a button and it will come up higher and then you glide through all the other cars. Today, as I speak, it has been done. Christians, what is your contribution to the larger society? In terms of your intellect, whose are you? Is it to spend time just praying in church? How are you impacting your society in terms of governance, in terms of politics, in terms of the economy? Joseph we talk about, and I'll conclude there. Joseph was gifted by God with the spirit of financial prudence and management. And the gift in him, when the time came, he showed up. O king, not to worry. You need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do that. And he said, look for a man that will implement all of this. He didn't put himself forward. And the king looked. Who has all of these ideas? Is not you. Many of you, God has deposited so much in you. You're now suffering from spiritual obesity. You're bloated in the spiritual realm because you're not giving. Because you're not releasing the things he's deposited in you. Some of you, your insight into the knowledge of God's word is such that when you open up your mouth, people will say, ah, but you have refused to speak. You've chosen to be quiet. And the grace of God upon your life is gradually chipping away. Gradually chipping away. And nobody can hold God to ransom. So he takes his grace that is upon you and he gives it to somebody who doesn't know as much as you do, but is ready to run. And then he empowers the person. And that's why sometimes some Christians say, ah, ah, I led him to Christ. He got born again. I was the one that ministered to him. How can he become an area pastor? How can he become a Zana pastor? Chokombe, you were not ready. You, he got born again through yes, but you were not ready. You didn't have the zeal. You didn't have the enthusiasm. When last did you see things in the kingdom that is not going right and you spoke against it? He says, the zeal of the house has consumed me. Are you speaking against what is going on? What has God deposited in you that the world will will profit from what are you being used of God and I say China is a godless society but look at where they are today godless Nigeria if all of us today decide to practice genuine Christianity this will be a land of righteousness Bible says righteousness exalts a nation you think it's a myth the righteousness that will exalt a nation is you and I when we start doing the right things and not hide ourselves in church all we do is just pray, 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 pray. God is tired. The man said creation is waiting and groaning for the manifestation of the source of God. Where are you? We carry our Bible. We go to camp. We go to Shiloh. Go to by uh, Palm of Change. And at the end of the day, is a country better for it. Is a country better for it. Joseph, look at the trajectory of his life. Out of the, the betrayal of his brothers. He found himself in the pit. Nobody to help him. Nobody to assist him. The brothers didn't know what God was doing in his life when they were doing all of that to him. There were certain things Joseph like God wanted to get rid of. After the pit, where did he find himself? Potiphar's house. Many of you are not ready to serve. Many of you are not ready to learn. He found himself in Potiphar's house to learn. Jesus Christ called the disciples to be with him to learn. This is how to do things. This is how the world. This is how I pray. After he had done all of that, what did he do? He now released them. Until you learn the things that the Lord wants you to learn, you will not be in the palace. He was in Potiphar's house. 
from Potiphar's house, where did he find himself? Where did he find himself? Why was he in prison? Because God wanted to showcase him. From the prison, he found himself where? In the palace. Shall be upstanding. Ask your neighbor, have you been with Christ? Have you been with Christ? Your life will showcase if you have been with him. So from today, let your life showcase that you have been with Christ. Go ahead and talk to God. Go ahead and talk to God. The Lord, from this moment henceforth, let my life x-ray and mirror you. Let my life today be used for your glory and praise. Lord, I know I have disappointed you in more ways than one. From this moment henceforth, let your hand be upon me while the saints are praying and talking to god and if you're here you have not given your life to christ whatever you are i want you to come forward and let me pray with you today is a day of salvation the lord god is calling you to himself he's saying to you come home come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden he says i will give you rest jesus is calling you he's inviting you to himself that the world will see and will say that of a truth this person has indeed been with the Lord. You want to be with Christ? Come and surrender your life to him. God bless you. There are so many out there. Come, come, come. The Lord is calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. I don't know if you guys know the song. He's calling you. Do you know the song? Ah, okay. I'm... Praise the Lord. He's calling you. He's calling you. Tell me what you're going to do. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not giving to singing, but I enjoy singing. Amen. There's see some. Please come, 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 and let's pray. Give the Lord a round of applause as they come forward. Hallelujah. There's rejoicing in heaven. There's rejoicing in heaven. There's rejoicing in heaven. Give them a round of applause. See some. Come, come, come. Let's quickly pray. Our time is fast spent. Let's quickly pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, your sons, your children are standing before you. They have recognized you as their Lord and Savior of their lives. Precious Father, let your blood this day avail for them. Wash them clean. Daddy, touch their hearts. May they never have cause to go back to the world that you have delivered them from. Keep agents of darkness away from them. Anything, O oh God, that will influence them for evil, take it away from them. Lord, these are the ones that will bring the revival. Because they are giving you their lives to you at this time. Breathe afresh upon them. Set them apart for your own use. Ignite the fire of God in their heart. Let it burn in their bones, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing of your spirit perfect everything that concerns this, your children in the name of Jesus Christ. We surrender them unto, unto, you, unto you, Father. Teach them. Incubate them. Let them grow in the knowledge of your word. Precious Holy Spirit, they have become yours. Please help them to grow. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Now, please go with my sister there. She'll share some things with you. Amen. Give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I have proclaimed your word as you have inspired me to. This is the word that you gave to me for this parish, even this day. I ask my Father and my God that when you spoke to your disciples, your word burned in their hearts. Let your word burn in the hearts of all these your children. Give them no rest night nor day until they have fed their human spirit with your word and mature into the things of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, let each and every one of us be in your presence. Incubate also God in your presence. Empower also God with your Holy Spirit that we may do great and marvelous things for your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.